really quickly before we get into today's show, if you're talking about climate change, global warming, or the earth is just doing what it does naturally for thousands of years, you're having an incomplete conversation. How can you think you're addressing these issues in a serious way if you've never heard of stratospheric aerosol injection, solar radiation management, cloud seeding, all under the general blanket term geoengineering? Well, today, we scratch the surface. Listeners and subscribers, hope all is well. Uh, I gotta tell you, I can't go anywhere without hearing people talking about this polar vortex, hearing people talk about the chilling temperatures we've been having across the nation. I mean, this stuff, um, this stuff is making big news. I just type in polar or Arctic vortex and look at what comes up. Okay, but the one thing I don't hear people talking about, I do hear people talking about climate change and global warming, but the one thing I don't hear people talking about are chemtrails or geoengineering, weather modification, weather manipulation. These are real things uh, that are going on. Look at this. Here, this is a video I put together about chemtrails, a geoengineering initiative. And here, right below my video, uh, YouTube put this contrail. So contrail, also called condensation trails or vapor trails, steamer of clouds sometimes observed, streamer of clouds sometimes observed behind an airplane flying in clear, cold, humid air. It forms upon condensation of water vapor produced. This is not what I'm talking about when I mean chemtrails. What I'm talking about when I mean chemtrails is weather modification, geoengineering and weather manipulation. Look at this. This is called Weather Modification Incorporated because people think weather modification doesn't happen. People think that uh, governments, organizations, and scientists are not using our skies as a laboratory and they aren't considering some of the secondary effects of what weather modification can do. People are talking about global warming and climate change. How can you consider global warming and climate change without even taking this into consideration when they're spraying aerosols into our atmosphere? A lot of the cases, it's desiccant during the winter and um, autumn months to remove uh, fog from the air. That's one application. Some of the applications are using um, reflective material in the atmosphere to reflect the sun's light back like aluminum. Uh, here we go. Look. Weather modification, commonly known as cloud seeding, is the application of scientific technology that can enhance a cloud's ability to produce precipitation. Weather Modification Inc. is one of the forefront scientific technology to maximize water availability worldwide. They're admitting to trying to increase the precipitation rate. And how are we supposed to know what kind of effect something like this can have? This isn't, this isn't it. Um, here we have uh, from Harvard, right? What is geoengineering? Geoengineering refers to a set of emerging technologies that can manipulate the environment and partially offset some of the impl uh, impacts of climate change. So when people are talking about global warming and climate change, why aren't they including this in their analysis? Uh, could there be uh, derogatory uh, effects? It, could there be secondhand effects that we aren't expecting with this type of weather manipulation, right? Solar radiation management is another form of this weather manipulation, weather modification, geoengineering. They're using the skies as a laboratory, literally. Solar radiation management projects are a type of climate engineering which seek to reflect sunlight and thus reduce global warming. I'm not making this stuff up, okay? We have government organizations, scientists, all different types of people um, and businesses getting involved in this new emerging technology, they say, even though the technology has been around since the 70s. We'll get into that later. But if you're out there blaming these um, extreme temperatures on climate change, but you aren't taking into consideration some of these programs, I don't know how you can do that. Here we have stratospheric aerosol injection. The ability of stratospheric sulfate aerosols to create a global dimming effect. Um, has made them a possible candidate to use in solar radiation management, climate engineering projects. How can we safely say we're going to engineer the climate and these are going to be projects and we don't know the impacts they may be having on Earth's uh, sensitive biological ecosystems? But it's, you know, whenever you hear about climate change, it's all about man-made climate change. And maybe there's something to that. Maybe it's not the emissions from our tailpipes. Maybe it's what they're doing with the weather as this campaign initiative to try and combat global warming how do we know that it's not making it worse you know here we have uh u.s patents for cloud seeding a cloud seeding system and you know here's what it looks like we have a whole list of u.s patents i'll, I'll leave a link in the description this is a whole list of U.S. patents that deal with uh, the category of climate engineering the technology they use to outfit the um, aircraft everything uh here we, here we just have weather modification method, 
you can go on and, and again i'll leave uh, links in the description you can go and check out all of these different um all of these different patent patents that uh, cl uh, cloud seeding uh, method of suppressing formation of contrails. You, you see what I mean? And, and it's very interesting because these are chemicals they're putting into our atmosphere, Liter literally chemical trails. So chemtrails for short. But when you type in chemtrails in Google, this is what comes up. The chemtrail conspiracy theory is based on the erroneous belief that long lasting condensation trails are chemtrails consisting of chemical or biological agents left in the sky by high flying aircraft sprayed for nefarious purposes, undisclosed, undisclosed to the general public. Uh, no, chemtrails are these chemical trails that they say are part of this new emerging technology. Yet when we look at some of these patents, look, 1988. Uh, 1989, 1990, this stuff has been around for a long time. So if you were blaming this Arctic vortex and the California fires and all this weird stuff going on around the world simply because of climate change, you're more short-sighted than you realize. Okay, we have geoengineering, we have weather modification, weather manipulation, and they're admitting they're doing this. How do we not know that these aren't helping or um, increasing some of the side effects of what we call global warming and climate change? It's absolutely incredible. I mean, isn't this incredible, right? Harvard scientists begin block, uh, begin experiment to block out the sun. And, they, you know, they've been working on this stuff for a long time. It says a group of Harvard scientists plan to tackle climate change through geoengineering, a term that I don't hear people talking about at all when they're bringing up climate change by blocking out the sun. I, this is absolutely incredible. This is not nothing new. Again, I mean, look at these patents. We have a process of producing artificial fog, the 20s, smoke producing mixture. This stuff has been going on for far too long. All, from the 20s, this technology has been in development, you know, all the way up until um, the, tw the, the century we're in right now. You know, you have a clear sky, then they run a couple of trails across. It looks like a grid, and all of a sudden it looks like this. Okay, this happened in Arizona just the other day, and I'm ashamed I didn't get a video of it because I knew eventually uh, I was going to be talking about it. But uh, absolutely incredible. Take care of yourselves out there.